Hi there, Katie B here. I just want to do a little video on explaining the overpower charts that were created um, and kind of how I came up with these numbers and kind of just a little explanation because I feel like maybe they're not being used or people don't really understand how the numbers were, um, how I came up with the numbers. So I just wanted to show you how you all can find your own numbers um, using this amazing tool that's in golfclashnotebook.io. And this tool can be used for actually a bunch of different things, but today we're going to focus just on how I figured out the amount of rings per OP that you need for rings on the ground versus the rings on your target needle when you're pulling your ball back. So when you go to golfclashnotebook.io, go uh, select tools on the top corner and you will see overpower simulator. So click on that. Now, they only have two options, drivers and woods, um, which makes sense. I mean, you're not going to really be overpowering your thorn very much. I mean, occasionally you have to, but um, anyway. So let's go for drivers. Um, select your type of driver. Let's go to Thor's hammer. Let's go to level five and power one. Now, I've done these charts based on power one. Um, the numbers do change very slightly from, I think, one to three. And then four and five do have their own numbers. So this is a great way, for, you know, it was just a basic chart, you know, the 0 0.2, 0 0.1 off. It's not gonna, you know, matter that much, I don't think. So I just decided to go power one across the board. Now, this is a great tool. You can compare different clubs on how to get to the same distance versus one club and another. So if like you wanna get to the same level as a uh, APOC seven, you know, with a power three ball versus a Thor's hammer five, you can put in and figure out how you can get the same amount of distance. You need a power five ball or whatever. It's an awesome tool. But I figured, wait, I think I can use this to figure out where the needle hits and how many rings of overpower. Now, if you see, there's a little bar that has the color of your OP needle. And on one side, it's yards and one side is rings. Now, if you pull back on this little ball, you'll see when you go max OP, a Thor's Hammer 5 has four and a half rings of total overpower. Each club is different. Each club has a different amount of total rings of overpower. Now, the target on your needle, look, this red line here goes beyond the fifth ring, correct? There are a total of seven rings of overpower that you get with every club on your needle. They don't relate exactly to the amount of rings you get on the ground, but every max OP shot is going two rings over the white ring on the top there. Um, so basically, I will now show you each, set, each ring, where it stops, and the amount of rings you get, and that's how I achieved this chart number. So hold on for that. Okay, so here we see a chart for the Thor's Hammer 5. I will be showing you how I see, you know, how I came up with all of these numbers. You see that there are seven rings total, total max OP, four and a half rings on the ground. So let's go to the first one. Here we go. When I pulled this ring, when I pulled this ball back, so the very tip of the, the, the arrow is at the very tip of the yellow ring is 1.1 rings on the ground. So right now it's about one to one. If you sh down on the ground, you need one ring of overpower, you go one ring on your needle. Now, for the second ring, the red ring, I pulled the ball back. I blew this up very big. I try to be as accurate as possible, but you know, these are basic numbers. They're not exact, 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 but they should be, you know, pretty good. Um, so the tip of the arrow is at the top of the tip of the red ring, which gives you one and a half rings on the ground. So if you need one and a half rings of overpower on the ground, you go two rings on your needle. Next, we have the blue ring, the third ring. If you need two and a half, 2.2 .2 rings, so basically two rings of overpower on the ground, you have to go three rings on your needle. Next is the black ring, clear ring, the fourth ring is 2.8 rings on the ground. So almost three rings, you are going four rings on your needle. 
and we get to the white ring, the fifth ring. Now, there is a light blue circle that goes around the white ring, so it's a little deceptive that the top of that is not actually five rings. It's just below that where the end of the blue ring is, or the light, light little outline of the white. So I tried to make sure the needle was just at the tip of the white ring, which would be five rings on your needle, but 3.3 .3 rings on the ground. So if you need three and a 3.5, three, three rings on the ground, you go five rings on your needle. Now for the invisible rings. So your sixth ring that you can pull is now 3.8 rings on the ground versus six rings on your needle. And then the final seventh ring is four and a half rings, which is your total amount of OP for this club. Okay, so just to show you a couple other different clubs and just a good way to find their max OP, right? So as you see, extra mile level seven has 3.7 rings of total overpower and APOC five has five rings of total overpower. And all these charts have calculated it the exact same way as I did the, for the Thor's Hammer five. I pulled back, you know, to be a, as precise as I could, pull back to each, the tip of each ring and just recorded what the ring section was saying as far as rings on the ground. I did want to mention something about the sniper. As you see here, it has 10 and a half rings of overpower total. Um, for some reason, I have noticed that these numbers do not work in headwind. I don't know if it's wind effect or what, but they do not work. So I did want to mention that. Um, I've tried to go say, for instance, five rings on the ground, I needed an OP. I went three rings on the needle and I was extremely short. I believe I've been experimenting with this in cross and tailwind and they seem to be pretty good. Um, however, if more people start using them, we can get a better idea of what works and what doesn't. And, uh, but I definitely wanted to let y'all know that if you're trying to use these numbers in headwind, they do not work. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the, the, the correct amount to go. If it is a one-to-one, -one, I do notice that anything past five rings, you are going to be wanting to go, you know, almost full max OP there. So I think it depends on the strength of the wind. I've only been doing these in very high winds, so I'm not sure when it takes effect. It might take effect after 10 miles an hour or, you know, I, I'm not really sure. But if uh, more people start doing it, maybe we can get a better handle on it. So, yeah. So there you have it. Um, please give us your comments, questions, feedback. If y'all start making, you know, start using these charts, they work. If they don't, we'd love to hear it. Um, you know, we're all just trying to figure out how this game works together, I think, and more information, the better we can all be better players. And, um, I talked to Zachary and he was telling me how they count the pixels in the game and to create this overpower simulator. So I believe that this stuff is pretty, pretty darn accurate and, um, yeah, leave a comment, message me. Um, I'm going to add these files in the description, so if you'd like to download them. And yeah, hope this is helpful, and thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye!